Amen. I'm glad and grateful to be able to be here. Turn to Isaiah chapter 9 today. The Lord willing, the next three, four Sundays, I'm going to be preaching on Sunday morning about on the name of Jesus, uh, God. Amen. Amen. We get close to Christmas time, won't be long. I tell you why, I don't know this year when it's about it's like, a, like Joe coming down and agreed to yeah. Ireland call just with my yeah. But uh, they say the older you get, the faster it gets out. Amen. But I'm grateful to be here today. We sure miss those that's not here today. Amen. And let's continue to remember these to see if you pray the Lord touch them. Amen. But one verse I'm going to read today in Isaiah verse, chapter 9. Very familiar scripture. We've been read, read a long time at Christmas time. Christmas time will be here before you know it. You know what? We want to just live right on God today. Thank yes. God for Him yes. being here. He's been kind to every one of us. Has been good to all of us. God has been good to all of us. Yes. Lord, yes. Lord. The last three years, a lot of people have had turmoil and trouble and yeah. tears yeah. and turbulence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. God's been good to every one of us here. That's yes. right. Yes. I mean, uh, that's right. I know I got sick, but God's still been good. If I went on to be to heaven, he would still been God. Yeah. That's right. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank the Lord. Amen. Lord. We don't measure God by his goodness. We measure God by his grace. That's right. right. Thank Amen. the Lord what he's done. But Isaiah Amen. 9 and 6, we're going to read one verse. It says, For the un, uh, for unto us a child is born. <clears throat> Unto us the Son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, Amen. the Prince of Peace. Yes. Father, help us this morning as we preach your word. And as God, we be a blessing. We want to be a blessing to those here. God, help us this morning as we come to your throne that we may lift you up. And may God, may we preach your word. And may we be a blessing. God, we don't want to tear anything in. We want to edify and build your church. Help us this morning. In these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Isaiah wrote this, uh, wrote this, this book inspired is about 700 years before the birth of Christ. Most time you hear this preached on, probably around Christmas time, this verse, rarely any other time. But he's talking about the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. He also talks about the nature and the death of Christ in the Bible, in his book. It talks about that in Isaiah, the death and the, uh, the death of Christ, the nature of Christ in the, in the book of Isaiah. Well, you know what we see here today? There's two truths we need to look at this morning that's involved in this verse. We see these truths are something we kind of look over when we read this verse of Scripture. The Bible says in this verse that Isaiah first says that a child is born. But he didn't stop there. He said that his son is given. Yeah. Now you say, preacher, it seems like he's repeating himself. And saying this, but no, really, there's a dual meaning in this verse. And it don't contradict each other, but it's something that's certain, the superiority of Christ. Let me tell you what, on that first Christmas morning, uh, day, night, a lot of people even not born in December. Well, you don't know when he's born. We just celebrate in December he was born. Yeah. We're born. That's all it matters anyway, man. Right. But we see here, the child was born, you know what, on, on, uh, at there in Bethlehem, but the son was already existing. He was pre-existing, he's always had been. Yeah. But we see here today, the Bible says the child was born, but it all 
said the, said the Son was given. But I want to preach today on this. He talks about him being the wonderful counselor. And I want to bring and preach a little bit about that today. About Christ being our wonderful counselor. Let me tell you today, friend, we read, read this. We realize that, you know, it said that Jesus, Jesus had an earthly mother but no earthly father. And Jesus had a heavenly father, but no heavenly mother. But we see here he came for one purpose. He came to redeem the souls of mankind. He came to be the ultimate price paid for all of us. We get Christmas so out of whack a lot of times. It ain't about the gifts you give. It ain't about the food you eat. It's about the son that was given and about the, the child that was born that time. Yeah. But we see here today, I'm going to talk about the counselor, the wonderful counselor. Many times, we as God's people, we need counsel from somebody. We need advice from for somebody. And I'm not downgrading anybody that goes to get counseling for things in their life. Because we all sometimes need someone yeah. to give us some insights and help in the time <laughs> we're in trouble. But one thing we need to understand, we better be very careful who we go to get counsel from. Yeah. Not all counsel is good counsel. That's right. And not all counsel is right counsel. Yeah. So we see here today, they said there was a story about two bums sitting on the park bench. One of them said this. He said, I've never took advice from anyone. That other bum said, shake my hand, friend. For I'm the man who followed everybody's advice. <laughs> and you know what? That makes a lot of sense. I see a lot of times. They blot up, you know, this too. <clears throat> and you may be in that boat. We take in bad counsel from people sometimes. We have. Yeah. Yeah. Ended up making a mess of our life. <laughs> but you know what? I found out a long time ago, no. <clears throat> A lot of people won't listen to wisdom. That's right. You know, when a person comes to you and asks you something, they want you to tell them what they want to hear. That's exactly. Right. Yep. And they want, if there's a problem, and they're the problem, they don't want you to point out that there's a problem. They want you to point out that something else is a problem. Yeah. Exactly. That's why people can't, that's why people die and they should go to hell. Mm -hmm. That's why holes are spit up now. You'd be surprised at the people that I've been and talked to, married couples. I'm not just talking about young married couples. I'm talking about couples in their 50s and 60s that I've had to counsel. And I hope in my mind I tried to give them wise counsel. I did. A lot of times people won't listen to words of wisdom, words of counsel. I often wonder why do they come for counsel if they're not going to take some good godly advice. Mm -hmm. yeah. They heed there were too many voices. There's a million people, you know this too, that they've listened to the wrong person, the wrong voice. And now they're nowhere to be found when it comes in the service of God. Yeah, amen. There are people today that's hindered, that not get, won't get saved, and won't get dedicated to serving God <clears throat> because of that counsel. Mm -hmm. The Bible said there are different voices in the world. Yeah. Yeah. So many voices, people listen to all these God, ungodly world, these worldly voices. That's why you can't get your loved one to get saved and listen to everything else. Everybody else is saying they won't listen to wisdom. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. But we need to see the effect of earthly counsel and godly counsel. 
We do need people sometimes to talk to. I do as a pastor. I talk to my friends and I can trust. Not everybody you can talk to about what's going on. Amen. You know what? They'll black their mouth all over. Look. Yeah, that's the God's truth. Amen. Amen. You've got to know who you can confide in and who you can't confide in. Mm -hmm. They play a part in our life. These counselors, they do. That a lot of people would give me good counsel. Had I not went for counsel and got good counsel from my pastor friends and other Lot of older people than me have been through some things. I'd have never, I'd have never, it would turn out different than what it did. But it, when I, the counsel, people's counsel, when the word of God is applied to their counsel to you, it's good counsel, amen. But I'm not trying, I'm not trying to demean any kind of counsel you can get, human counsel. We need human counsel sometimes. Yeah. But I want to I want to I want to reveal and show you today how much superior the counsel of God is than anything else we can go to. You see, a lot of people, and I found this a long time ago. A lot of people go for counseling, but they've got a predetermined plan in their mind what they're gonna do before they mass counseling. Yeah. In other words, they already know what they're going to do. Yeah. They're just going to go talk to you and see if what you say line up what they want to do. If it's not, they'll, they'll discard what you tell them to do. What they want. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. But we see here as we preach about the wonderful counselor this morning. First of all, when you go to a counselor on this, on this earth, they ask you what you need in. But I'm glad the wonderful counselor already knows what you need before you come to him. Yeah, amen. Aren't you glad that this morning? You see, a counselor, when you got, and I've never been to a counselor, but I've heard people that have. I've seen, I've seen TV too, amen. Yeah, amen. <laughs> they'll ask a whole lot about you before they'll try to diagnose your problem. Yeah. But ain't you glad we got a heavenly counselor that knows everything about it? That's us. right, amen. He knows exactly what, what we're made out of. He sure does. Let me tell you one thing. They'll ask you about the life experiences that you've had in your life. Yeah. They'll ask you about other things that went on, but uh, we go to the one, the Holy and Heavenly Council. He knows what our needs are. But I'll tell you one thing, friend. Let me tell you what God, that son that was given, he knows you better than you know you, say Lord yes. Satan. Mm -hmm. I was married 38, 37 and a half years. And me and my wife, we could about finish each other's sins when you each other that way. Yeah. Christ knows us better than anybody else. Now, you, wouldn't you rather go to somebody who knows what they're talking about? Let me tell you something. Let me ask you, tell you this. When I'm going through a problem, brother, and I'm going through something in my life, I want to talk to somebody who's been through something with their Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to talk to somebody that's been through things in their life. How can I talk, get counsel and comfort from somebody that they've experienced the same thing that I've experienced? Yeah. So many times there are so many people seek counsel from people that have never experienced. But I'm glad they heavenly counselor. Hey, he's experienced it all. Yeah. He has. Let me tell you one thing we need to understand this. Like we said, he knows what we, what we need before we ask. Matthew 6, 8 says, But be ye therefore like be, be, but be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things you need of before you ask him. Yeah. He knows what our, about our past. He has all knowledge of our past. He knows what we were and you were and what kind of life you lived. He knows exactly what kind of background you come from. He knows your sin of the past. He knows the hidden hurt of your past. Yeah. He knows the time you, you lost that dream that you had. You lost. He knows all about that. Yeah. He knows about all your past experiences. 
He knows what you're going through. He knows about prayer too. What bothers me sometimes? Especially you going through a bereavement or something. People that have never experienced what you've experienced far from lose a child, lose a spouse. And they mean well, they really do when they say what they say. They don't say, I don't know exactly what you're going through. They don't at all. Mm -hmm. but I'm glad when I go to my counselor today, he knows exactly mm -hmm. what I'm going through because he's been through. That's right. Aren't you, wouldn't you rather tell how somebody has been through what you've been through and Amen. gone through and went through the other side yes, and called us to help you and let me tell you, we see the heavenly counselor today. We need God to help us. Hey, don't go to a lost man or a lost woman to get counsel right. because let me tell you, they don't know what the word of God is the truth of the word of God. Amen, that's right. He knows our present pressures and our, our present temptation. And he trials your friends. He does. Yeah. He knows all about us. Too many times he would get hung up and they say, well, you go to this man, go to this woman, she can help you. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you, we have got, I have got help from a lot of people. Many men, many times, I was going down the road coming back to Troy yesterday, and I think about the men and the, and the preachers and the, even the, some of the godly women that talked to me and helped me. How the wisdom have helped me to make, not make mistakes that I would regret and I would learn to live with the rest of my life. I want to tell you what, friend. He knows right now, he knows your thoughts. He knows your failures. He knows your sins. And He knows your heart. And He has knowledge of everybody in this congregation this morning. During revival, Brother Doug said something, and I've heard it said before, but it stuck with me pretty good what he said. Remember this. God not only sees you here at church, He sees you at home. Yep. He sees you at work. Yep. He right. sees every aspect. Remember this, you're always under the, the, the all-seeing eye of God. Amen. Amen. And we do that when we remember that. We will understand and we will learn to act a little bit better in what we do. Yes, Mark. I want to tell you something, friend. Not only that, He knows our future. He knows what's going ahead in our lives. Ain't there a place over here on the corner of where they used to be? They have a, a psychic. Yeah, she, she had a crystal ball. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh -huh. I don't think nobody with a crystal ball tell me what my future is. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah, Bible tell me what my future is. My, my counselor yeah, tells me yeah. what future is. That's why he keeps us out of trouble. Yes, sir. We want to do things our way. He said, no, but God, he knows if you do it, he knows what's going to happen here. Yeah. Yeah, See, many times we want to play the role of God and say, Lord, I know what's best for you. You know what's best for you. That's right. But he does. Amen. No, he, no earthly counsel said, I know what's going to happen to you in the next few years. No way he can. Earthly counsel can't. But our God can. He knows. Yeah, amen. Jesus knows what's going to happen. And he knows when we're going to die. He knows what's going to happen when we die. He knows what we're going to face. He already knows that. That's why he helps us and provides grace for the future in our lives. He knows what's ahead. One thing about this is another point about the heavenly counselor. He hopes he can help you. She hopes she can help you. But I'm glad our heavenly counselor, he knows he can help us. Amen. Right. He knows what's ahead. He knows he can help us. Yes, Preacher sometimes, or pastors are called upon sometimes to, to counsel people. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's my prayer, and I guess any other preacher's prayer, that Lord help us to say the right thing and to give them the right biblical advice to help them when they're going. You say, well, preacher, I've never been able to get help. I'll tell you what, God can get, get the Lord can help you. Why? He's the answer for every question you've got in your life. Amen. 
He's the answer. He's got the answers. People don't have all the answers. They people that speak to that before. Brother, what about this? I have to be honest. I don't know. Yeah. Hey, I can put on, I can say, yeah, I can use these words 30 foot that long and kind of confuse them. But if I don't know, hey, I ain't going to say, I do know what I know. Yeah, he yeah. Right. But he knows what we're going through. He thinks yeah. he knows it. Those that tried him testify of his goodness. Hey. The Word of God says in John 6, 68 and 69, then Simon Peter asked him and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? And we, he said, Thou hast the word of eternal life. That's what Peter said. And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Where can we get answers for this evil going on in the world today? From God, from the Lord Jesus. Look at this, this is evil going on. You have to watch every step you make. You have to watch any sudden movement, brother Mike, you see someone in the store or restaurant. Yes. Call these nuts, these demon possessed people out and try the devil use them to all have it. Yeah, man. Where can we get answers? Where can you turn the truth for regard to your heart? Taking a man, a counselor, a heavenly or earthly counselor, cannot get inside your heart, but I'm glad that a heavenly counselor yes, knows that. our heart. Amen. He knows our heart. He's the answer every time Jesus is the answer. That's right. He helps you handle any situation you face. When you're going through a situation, you feel like you can't even breathe. Yeah. You feel like, hey, I don't think I'm going to make it, but you glad that he would have to him. Yes. He's be still. Yes. yes. And he said, he stood on the, 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 the bow of that boat, and then wind the sea was a rashing and crashing. He just said, peace. Ain't you glad when you go through the trial, he can come on the gable in your soul yeah. and say, yeah. Peace, yeah. Man. Yeah. you got to have the counselor. Yeah. Yeah. Earthly yeah. counselor can't do that. That's right. All right, preacher. Seems like sometimes you don't hear him audibly, but you feel him. Seems like he'll slip up and say it's going to be all right. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh -huh. Woo. Just, just, mm. just abide by me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. That's right. Too many times, huh, folks, we we get so distraught, we don't even want to hear that voice. Our life is such shambles and such mess that we we are mute to the word of God, mute to God's word. He even tells us, "Say, come to me, all you to labor, hit and lay, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon yeah. me and learn of me, for I make you love the heart. You can find rest. You shall find rest until your souls." Amen. He longs to help us and, and, and lead us when we go. Yeah. Why? Because he's the great shepherd, the good shepherd. He's the chief shepherd. Amen. No matter he already that he already had not an ounce sheep. He had 99 sheep, but he'll lose that 99 and he's going to look for that one that's hurt. He'll, yeah. he'll mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Many times I've been that one, that 9,900 sheep, that yeah. year. Yeah. And many times he come to where I was. Right. Because I got distance from him. He come to where I was. Amen. Amen. That counselor, he knows our need. <laughs> he can help us through every trial we face. And we know what I was going through this morning. Amen. Sad fact though is this morning, friends. So many people just turn away from them, brother. They regret what how they decided, what they decided to do. Isaiah said, in Isaiah 48, 17, he said, Thus saith the Lord, thy redeemer, the holy one of Israel. I am the Lord thy God, which teaches thee the prophet, and leadeth thee by the way which uh, that thou shouldst go. Oh, that thou hast hearkened to my commandments. Then had thy peace been in the river, and thy righteousness been in the waves of the sea. When you turn back on, when you tell people to turn back on God, there are people right here. And I know people that you personally come to this church have turned their back on God. Yeah. And every their disaster and disaster and disaster back to back happens to them. Yeah. And they've not got no enough <coughs> knowledge or enough of a uh, 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 willingness to understand is God doing it to him. Amen. He's the only one who can lead us the right way. Yes. 
Man, I remember one nine years ago, I went to Charlotte to preach. I've never been, I never drove out of, I've never driven out of, hardly driven out of Montgomery County. For years, Troy didn't have a two stoplight for years. Now they got four or five men. <laughs> but I remember what preaching at the church down in Charlotte. Little place, y'all heard of it. Some of you men have heard of it. You used to call it the Shuffletown Drag Street. <clears throat> they used to raise cars down there. And there it is, right there in Shuffletown. Man came and asked me to come preach for him. I said, okay, I never do it on the internet before. You talking about scared, brother Mike. I'm scared. <laughs> I went down for the clerk then. Got on there and I finally did find the church. We had to be a road mat, like a three foot, you know, two yards long wide. But I come back and I was going to, supposed to hit Interstate 85 North. But instead, I hit south. <laughs> Got to drive, and I thought Beth said, I don't remember passing that in you. Huh. She said, you're going the wrong way. You know, I was being all, we don't want to miss it. Come on, help me. You need to help me out this morning. Amen. <laughs> finally, I said, you know, I finally had a wall of 15. I said, you know, I think you're going the wrong way. <laughs> I stopped at a little convenience store. That this fella, he was an A-man or something. He was talking all kinds. He said, you here? You're supposed to be here. <laughs> I said, thank you, sir. And I went on my way. See, I found, lost my way. I had to find somebody to show me the way. Not you the way. I'm glad he knows the way. Amen. Amen. I'm glad when I'm getting right. confused in my life, and I don't know which way to go, he'll say, just follow me. I'm going to tell you what, many times people regretted the way they took. Yeah. Many times they have. He's the only one can teach you what you need to know, what's best. He'll direct you the way you should go. Mm -hmm. Too many people this morning are sitting at home, won't go to church, won't serve God, because they won't, don't want no counsel from Him. Yeah. Amen. Right. You see the earthly counsel, I'll tell you, look, if you don't feel like going to church, don't worry about it. You just feel good about yourself. Yeah, yeah right. amen. Just I, I sound like Joel Osteen. No, bless him. Bless him. Tell him I just feel good, but I can't smile while I can do my teeth <laughs> But he'll say, feel good again. Just be, be good within yourself. Yeah. yeah. Bible said our heart is a desperately wicked. Who can know our heart? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but we see here today, and we read it here and see this. People go their own way. And it, 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 there's people right now, I've seen people go to Mike in the last few months who used to go to this church. They look like they've been drunk behind a little trash truck. And I know if it's a trash driver, I don't mean nothing about that. But they have, look like they just all peace. Mm -hmm. At one time, they were facing the beach the house. Probably they went the wrong way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Went the wrong way. I remember this song. We have never sang this song no more. This is a good song. It was used for an invitation. It says, come home, come home, you are weary, come home, softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, you are weary, come home, I'm glad he comes home. Yes. I'll tell you what, I, I, you know what I thought when I was happy? I thought, was thinking about the prodigal son, it didn't happen this way. You know what I think about mine? I got to think about this. Try thinking about this. Supposedly they had phone back then. They didn't. But what would have happened if he had called his daddy and said, Daddy, I want to come home. You know what he didn't say? Come on home, son. Yeah. Come on, yeah. Come on home. <laughs> and I'm glad the Father and the Head are here with the counselor. Yes. He comes away from home and said, Come on back. Be like, they'll be like, drunk. I've done so much. He says, Okay, right. you're still my son. Amen. 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 I'm glad today I'm glad today Lord, the God. Heavenly Council, it don't Amen. matter. I'm glad this morning the Heavenly Council, Amen. I'm glad that He knows all about us. He yes. loves us. Amen. Amen. And He knows how He can help you. Amen. 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 I'll tell you what. I went. About six, eight months ago, my knee was, well, it was back in June, July, my knee was, y'all 
know you see me quick walking here quick walking. I like it hurt. I want that doctor over there, orthopedic doctor, say I got Sister Gail goes to. Did x ray with my knees. He come out and he said, uh, you got a lot of arthritis in that knee. He said, but you know what? There's something I didn't help you. I said, bring it on, son. He brought that needle out. And I don't care what Brother Fee stuck it. And it didn't hurt. He done good. He didn't hurt a bit. But you know what, Brother Phil? It wasn't for two or three hours I felt the difference in my knee. He had the right prescription for what I did. Ain't you glad of a careful day? Yes, yes, sir. For what we need. Pray to God. Hey, Lord, I got a bucket on you. Come on, I'm me and Brother Amen. Paul. Amen. Hey, Lord, I need help. I'm scared. He said, I can come. Yes, yeah, Lord, I got a need. Ooh. I got the bills got to pay. He said, I'm the cat on the back. Yes, sir. I can pray. reach your knee. One thing about it, good folks, the other point I'm going to bring up today, most of the time when you want to have a, to see a counselor down here, you have to make an appointment. Uh, yeah. But aren't you glad right now? Mm -hmm. This heavenly counselor, this wonderful counselor is always open. Yes, he is. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He don't make his way when we enter. But I had to. You'll call me. And you, even if you're so hurt, I remember Lizzie he had that bad tooth take a few months back. It like killed her. And it took her a month and a half to get food. Yeah. That's God I know. Yeah. It's everywhere like that. People getting sick. I said today, and she been having this trouble for about six months. January. Lord willing, God's going to be able to take care of her. God's going to take yeah. care of her. Yes, yeah. amen. Yeah. I'm not a heavenly counsel when I'm brother mine. That old song the Royal Telephone. Yeah. I'm glad you can call him when I'm him and call upon me. Yeah. And I'll hear thee. I'm gonna tell you what this morning, Miss Counselor. Amen. He's always available. You know what? When Peter was sinking in the water, he didn't say, give me a apartment to get my help. He cried out this. You know what? That heavenly counsel stepped out and said, hey, come on now. Yeah, you ain't come on. Sometimes, folks, we crawl upon God. And you know it's true. You feel like you see, you see it, it seemed like to you that He's not even listening to you. But we were all wrong when we say that. Yeah. He told us to call on Him and He'd hear us. But we've got to go with Him in the right manner, folks. There's three different requests our counselor will hear and answer. First of all, the request for our conversion to be saved. No one really, truly can find their true home and to, to help them get until they get saved. So many people are trying, they're trying. What's when they try everything? We get the, 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 the church up here says, try Jesus. Okay, what that makes him not you can even try. Yeah. I'll tell you what I try I didn't try and I trusted him. Right. We tell you what we didn't understand and see this this morning. That after I got saved, I didn't say, Lord, the if you can. I said, Lord, I'm lost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lord, let me tell you, you know what the Bible said in Romans 10, 9, Thou shalt confess that thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thy heart that Christ made from death, thou shalt be saved. He said, for the heart man believes unto righteous, and with the mouth confession made known to salvation. For whosoever, whosoever, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Amen. Man. He's always available for him. For them to turn to him in faith. Amen. You ain't got to be in church to be saved. <laughs> you hadn't. You just got whoever you had to follow him in faith and cry out to him. That counselor is always available. Yeah. Yes, he is. He's available to save you. <coughs> but I will tell you what, friend. He's available to help him, to turn to him. God, if you read in the Bible, read in the Bible. I challenge you to, to read this in the Bible. There's never been a time in the Bible you read 
When somebody called out to Jesus in faith, that he didn't stop in heaven. And the night I got saved, I, you know what I was doing? I won't get saved, but I wanted hell. And I'm glad many inches in the Bible, the Bible says Jesus stood still. Right. And I'm glad I called on him for salvation. You know what he did? He saved him. Out of yeah, God. Right. Yeah, My brother Phil said many times, he didn't wait three days later and say, right then, I cried out then. Mm -hmm. Instantaneously, I'm a child of God. Yeah, amen. Man. I'll tell you what, friend. I'm glad he's available for those who call upon him in faith to save. Isaiah 59 1 said, Behold, the Lord's hand is not short, that it cannot save, neither is the ear heavy, that it cannot hear. The next thing, not a request for conversion, but a request for cleansing. But I'm telling you what, the Bible says if we confess our sin, he's faithful to judge to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from awful unrighteousness. Just tell him the truth about yourself. He knows it anyway. That's right. Just tell him. He the one, you know what? He won't, he just, just doesn't want to help you. He will help you, whatever it is. He cares about what sin has done to you in your life. I've known God for a long time. Some of you have been saved a whole lot longer than me. I'm, I'm, I next year be 45 years since I give my heart to God. And God's been gracious and kind to me. I'll tell you what, for me to understand. How long has it been since you've been a while since you've come and get on this altar and just say, Lord, there's things in my life that's beset me. That sin was just an issue that set me in the me. I'm talking about a child of God. How long has it been since you just cut up the altar? And quit playing games and playing like you've done wrong in your life. Yeah. And just say, God, these things that I've let go, I want to let, let you have them and take them. And I'll be through them. He's our counselor. The night I got saved, Brother Philip, I had hand me down clothes. My hair was almost to my shoulders. Mm -hmm. I was a mess on the outside. But that night, the Lord Jesus Christ done something for me. He cleansed me. Amen. He cleansed me. You know what? Ain't that not to get the good old, get a, get a nice shower clean that feels male clean and good. But ain't nothing no better than being cleaned from the inside. Amen. Clean from the inside. Amen. And that's what he, he'll call, you, you call to him for cleansing today. That counselor can do See, the counselor you go to, an earthly counselor can't do that. He can, he can tell you your problem, but he can't help you. He can't heal the root of your problem. That's right. But I'll tell you what. The, one, the woman come to the preacher one day, what she said, preacher, sometime I just stretch the truth. Sometimes I say things that's not true. Pastor, you know what Pastor says? Come on, sister. Tell the, tell the Lord the truth. Tell him that you lie. We want to walk whitewash it, but we need to just call it like it is. Right. Mm -hmm. Lord, we don't fall short. We sin. Yeah, man. Too many people got too much pride to admit that they were wrong. They will never say, I'm sorry. You ever had people that, 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 that shoot off at the mouth and get mad and tell you and get mad at you and say things that will hurt you? But they will never ask for forgiveness. What they do, here's what they do about life. They start hanging around a little bit more. Look at once a little bit. And soon they'll start buying stuff and try to <coughs> get back on the good side. But that relationship and fellowship is not still not the same. It's not like See, too many people this morning, they swept things under the rug for so long. you got a big lump in your rug. Move forward. When you sweat, you sweat, you sweat it under the rug. It may have been things you've done 27 years ago that you needed to get right. You've lied over. You've done things that right. You didn't care of them this morning. Yeah. But I'll tell you something, friend. 
God will hear the prayer of a person than a humble person. He already knows our needs. He knows our hurts. He knows our sins. Not only here's another thing he'll, he'll listen to you. That request for God to calm you down. To give you calm in your heart, in your life. Sad thing happens. There's a lot of time, folks, in our life. There's things that really upset us. And really, they've been things, Brother Philip, that people have said and done that's worried me sick. And I know to give it to God, but the flesh won't let me give it to him until I finally resist and say, God, I've got you to help me calm me down like this. Even the book of Philippians talks about us to be calm. He says in, in Philippians 4, 6, he says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be laid on to God. We need to just turn it turn over some time of trouble. We to wring our hand and wonder what we're going to do. Most time when trouble comes, some people do turn it over. A lot of times they wait and lose it in their life and so on. I guarantee you my old car out there, I got sitting out there in the driveway in the churchyard. I got one of them old donut tires, probably a spare tire, and they probably never use it. It's there when I need it, and that's what I'll been treat God. They don't right. ever use it much until they need it. Yeah. 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 And that's exactly what we need to understand this morning. He'll give us a peace that passes that understanding. He'll guard our minds, our hearts, our souls. During this time of the year, they said there's a lot of people that fall into a bad state of depression during Christmas time. Yeah. Many because they probably ain't got money to buy their family gifts. Some of them are in depression because they're, they're by themselves and they have no family to spend time with them. And many times, sad to say, some even take their life during this time of year. Yeah. Because their peace is just. They haven't got peace anymore. But I'm glad God can come to where we are. You may get lonely, my friends. You're never by, you're never by yourself. You're never alone. He'll give us a peace that goes beyond our understanding. One of the words that we need to understand at our, our counselor is that advocate. Now, you... You remember you read what talks about the Holy Spirit. In the Greek, it talks about it being the paraclete. And that word paraclete in the English, it means one that's called alongside to help. And I'm glad I can call on him and you'll come to my way. Yeah. And to help me, folks. He's a great paraclete. He's an advocate, Jesus says. He can give a call. And I'll tell you, you go to the council and it might get cost you. They probably charge some cost a hundred dollars an hour. But I'm glad our cash is free. Yeah. I'm glad we can come to him. I'm glad we, he, they don't say, don't say before you talk about whether you got all your Medicare, Medicaid. Do you have insurance? He said, no. It's all right. It's taken care of. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. I'm glad that this morning that we can go to him. Amen. That he's already paid the price with his blood. Amen. I don't tell you, a lot of these counselors, that's what their job, they need to go to school. Or they do that to earn a living for their family. I understand that, but Jesus paid the price. Yeah. It's all free. Yeah. He offers a service that only He can offer. You don't have to have any rich, poor, illiterate, or educated. You come to Him. An attorney is called a counsel because he, the attorney stands for you and advises you before the judge. That's exactly what God does. I will tell you what, folks, the other thing, but let me tell you what, friend, I'm glad you're my counsel. Amen. I'm glad this, we, 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 we're going through this Christmas season. It ain't December that I know, but it's going to be December in the next few days. But I'm glad he's my counsel, wonderful counsel. And many times, Brother Mike, had I not chose to seek his will and to seek his counsel, I don't know what I'd be today. Amen. 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 
Aren't you glad he left counselor this morning? That wonderful counselor. Let's stand. Maybe there's something you need to pray about. Maybe 